Hello and welcome to This Week in African Tech. It is a witty, irreverent look at the African tech industry. Now, if this is something that's interesting to you, let's go. Let's start with Rapid Fire. This is where we look at who's raising money, who's doing well, and who's not. Colin, a Cairo-based edtech startup which does school management as a service, has just raised $100,000 from a Cairo-based VC of a publishing firm. Next, SOS Credit, a Moroccan online mortgage company, has raised an undisclosed amount from the Moroccan Growth Fund. And lastly, the Gambian Angel Investor Network has just been launched. They are looking at funding tickets between $20,000 to $300,000. Tell them to bring me my money. Yes! And that ends the rapid fire round. This segment is called the Meteor News. Last year, South Africa's Constitutional Court legalized the growing and the use of cannabis for private use. Uh, it's tobacco and marijuana. That has led to a number of organizations looking at the cannabis industry in Africa and, and beginning to think that there might be an opportunity as governments begin to relax regulations. I've just come across Africania, which purports to be Africa's uh, first cannabis incubator. And the idea is to incubate and grow cannabis startups. Will we be seeing on-demand platforms for cannabis across Africa? I don't know that it will happen in the next two to three years, but maybe in, in 10 years. South Africa will probably be the first to open the market up to business cannabis. It'll just be interesting to watch across Africa. Now let's talk about blockchain. Sierra Leone has just become the first African country to launch a national identification system with a blockchain backbone. Now this system was launched and created by a San Francisco based charity Kiva. And then Kenya created a task force last year by the Kenyan ICT minister of 40 eminent persons from Cisco, IBM, the African Development Bank, Safaricom, that will look and give recommendations for blockchain to the minister. Now they come up with some interesting recommendations. But first of all, if you don't know what blockchain is, let me give you a definition. It's a distributed digital ledger that allows participants to inexpensively and transparently record transactions in a permanent traceable way. Now, did I confuse you with that? Here's a better explanation of blockchain. Blockchain is shorthand for a whole suite of distributed ledger technologies that can be programmed to record and track anything of value. Let's say there was a dispute between Anne and her brother Steve over who owns a piece of land that's been in the family for years. Because blockchain technology uses the ledger method, there is an entry in the ledger showing that Adam first owned the property in 1900. When Adam sold the property to Dave in 1930, a new entry was made in the ledger, and so on. Every change of ownership of this property is represented by a new entry in the ledger. Anne is the current owner, and we can see that history in the ledger. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Unlike the age-old ledger method, originally a book, then a database file stored on a single system, blockchain was designed to be decentralized and distributed across a large network of computers. This decentralizing of information reduces the ability for data tampering. The task force has come up with some really good recommendations. Some of them include uh, the draft of a digital asset framework that will enable Kenyans to raise funds through initial coin offerings. Some of that is creating digital locker systems that will complement a digital ID for every citizen to securely store official documents like credit reports and birth certificates. Now, come closer. No, a little closer. Blockchain is a good technology, but I need you all to understand this. It's not the silver bullet that's going to solve the problems of corruption 
and integrate. Let's not get caught up with shiny things. Badam bam! Chinese firm Huawei seems to be doing a, a lot of surveillance work in Africa. The company has partnered with the Ugandan police to provide CCTV cameras that will provide facial recognition and artificial intelligence. They have also partnered with Cameroon Police Force to provide a command center which it will monitor over 2,000 cameras that have been installed in the country. Now, here's what I have to say about Huawei supporting surveillance in Africa. Dun dun dun! And here's the end of the media segment. I lived and worked in England for a number of years as a technology consultant. Now, I'd like to be considered as a UK tech expert every time there is a technology issue that's affecting England. I would like to be invited to speak on CNN and BBC and other media houses on the topic. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> this is a phenomenon that happens quite a bit to the African tech ecosystem. We have non-local founders who spend at most five years in very narrow roles within the technology sector on the continent. And unfortunately, when issues are affecting African technology, they become the voices and the front runners for these conversations in the Western media. If, if you're not going to do the same thing on the other way around, I really don't think you should be doing the same thing to the African tech ecosystem. Just a recommendation. And here's the end of this week in African tech. Thank you very much for your time. Now, if there is interesting news that you think I should speak about on the program, definitely share with me in the comments. And if you find this interesting and helpful, please comment, share, like within your ecosystems. Now, I leave you with this video. Enjoy the rest of the week and I'll see you back here again next week.